Hey guys, welcome back to Film Truth. Today we'll talk about how Opal is formed and mined. Let's head into it. How Opal is mined. Opal is one of the few minerals that can be economically mined by a single miner. Shaft sinking with a pick and shovel was the simplest form of mining used in the early days of opal mining. A shaft is driven straight down until promising opal dirt is found. The miner would then go sideways following the opal's level. Picks and explosives are used to progress through the level. Due to the stone's fragility, any opal found is delicately extracted with a hand pick or screwdriver. The majority of mining was done by two men, one in the hole and the other up top winding the windlass and hauling out the dirt. Most shafts are now sunk by coal weld type drills, which use an auger bucket to sink vertical holes up to one meter in diameter. Hand windlasses used to lift waste material or mullock from the shafts and drives in buckets, but now power winches or automatic bucket tippers are used. Of course, drilling a hole in well-known opal country doesn't guarantee that you'll find what you're looking for. At Lightning Ridge alone, more than 60 different fields have been worked, each of which has waxed and waned depending on what was discovered. Since the 1970s, the use of mining machines has increased dramatically. To streamline opal mining and dramatically increase increased productivity, tunneling machines with revolving cutting heads and small underground front end loaders boggers, have been introduced. Miners quickly recognized the advantages of technology, such as drilling test shafts to determine their chances before starting serious excavation, using jackhammers instead of pickaxes, blasting with dynamite, or bringing in bulldozers. Bulldozers are used to remove the overburden and expose the shallow level. Spotters trail behind, looking for traces of opal, and any seams discovered are hand-picked. Of course, when the opal is only discovered after it has been shattered, Added, all of these labor savers can end in bitter tears. They also raise the equipment and operation costs. Due to the fact that most old diggings have been largely worked out or reworked using open cut methods, exploration for new opal bearing prospects has begun over known opal bearing country. In the search for new deposits, well-funded exploration companies have gotten involved and are using more systematic and extensive exploration techniques on a regional scale. Positive results have been reported indicating that more exploration and new mines are in the works. Also, make sure to write your thoughts in the comments section. How Opal is Formed a solution of silicon dioxide and water is used to make opal. Water picks up silica from sandstone as it flows down the Earth's surface and carries this silica-rich solution into cracks and voids caused by natural faults or decomposing fossils. When water evaporates, it leaves a silica deposit behind. Over a very long period of time, this cycle repeats itself, eventually resulting in the formation of opal. When conditions are ideal, silica spheres contained in silica-rich solutions in the earth form and settle in voids under gravity to form layers of silica spheres. At a depth of 40 meters, the solution is thought to degrade at a rate of one centimeter thickness every five million years. When the process allows the spheres to reach a consistent size, precious opal begins to form. The sphere size of precious opal varies between 150 and 400 nanometers, resulting in a play of color due to diffraction in the visible light range of 400 to 700 nanometers. To provide a site for opal deposition, each local opal field or occurrence must have contained voids or porosity of some sort. In volcanic rocks and their surrounding environments, opal appears to fill only voids and cracks, whereas in sedimentary rocks, the weathering process has created a variety of voids. Carbonate leaching from boulders, nodules, and a variety of fossils, in combination with existing cracks, open centers of ironstone nodules, and horizontal seams, creates a plethora of molds for the deposition of secondary minerals like opal. The majority of the opal deposit isn't valuable because it doesn't show a play of color, it's referred to as potch by miners and common opal by mineralogists. Opaline silica may fill the pore space in silt and sand-sized sediments, cementing the grains together and forming unique deposits known as matrix, opalized sandstone or concrete, which is a more conglomeratic unit near the base of early Cretaceous sediments. 
The many different types of opal are determined by a number of factors. The climate, in particular, alternates wet and dry periods, resulting in a rising, or more importantly, falling water table that concentrates any silica in solution. The silica is formed either by volcanic activity or by deep weathering of Cretaceous clay sediments, resulting in both silica and white kaolin, which are commonly found in opal fields in Australia. In order to provide the unique situation for the production of its own variety of opal, special conditions must also prevail to slow down a falling water table. The chemical conditions that cause opal to form are still being studied, but some believe that acidic conditions must exist at some point during the process to form silica spheres, which could be caused by microbes. While there are volcanic hosted and other types of precious opal deposits in Australia, sediment hosted deposits associated with the great Australian basin account for nearly all economic production. Black opals from Lightning Ridge in New South Wales, White Opals from South Australia, and Queensland Boulder and Matrix Opal are the three main types of natural sediment hosted precious opal found in Australia. The formation of Boulder Opal. Boulder Opal. It's found in, in brown ironstone host rock. Boulder Opal, found in Queensland, forms in an ironstone concretion, which is slightly different from other types of opal. Ionization from sedimentary deposition caused the concretion to form. They are, by definition, ionized concretions of varying hardness with an approximate opal composition of SiO2 at 28%, Fe203 plus Al203 at 68%, and H2O at 1%. The opal is found in elongated or ellipsoidal ironstone concretions or boulders that range in size from a few centimeters to three meters across. The boulders could be confined to one or more layers, or they could be strewn about the weathered sandstone at random. Their composition varies from sandstone types, a rim or crust of ferruginized sandstone surrounding a sandstone core, to ironstone types, composed almost entirely of iron oxides. The opal can be found as a filling or lining between the concentric layers, or as a kernel in smaller concretions or nuts, or as a radial or random crack in the ironstone, as in the famous Yawa nuts found in Yawa and Kuroit fields. The opal occurs as a network of veins, infilling voids or between grains of the host rock in matrix opal, ferruginous sandstone or ironstone. It's also possible to find rare seam or band opal, which is usually encased in ironstone. Boulder opal is attached to the ironstone, unlike other sedimentary precious opals, and stones are usually cut with the natural ironstone backing intact. When the opal is thick enough, solid opals can be cut from the ironstone material. Boulder opals are cut in freeform shape to highlight their individual beauty and avoid wastage, as well as in standard shapes and sizes. Magnificent picture stones are cut as well, but these are primarily for collectors rather than for use in jewelry. What do you think about opal mining and forming? Do you think it's an interesting topic? Let us know in the comments section. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.